Hi everybody, good evening. I thank you that you are joining me right now for you know this little time that I have with you. And I'm gonna ask this very, very, very important question. My question is this. How small is your psychological wallet? How small is your money comfort zone? That's another word for psychological wallet. What do I mean by a psychological wallet? It is how you see yourself in relation to money. I'll give you an example why I have, I had a very small psychological wallet, okay? I was growing up as a kid and my mom was with me and we were going to buy shoes because my shoes were all dilapidated and uh, worn out. So we were walking in the department store and there were lots and lots of shoes there. And then I said to my mom, mom, look at that. And I, you know, th those shoes were, were up and there was this glass container and it looked really, really nice. And I said, mom, look at that. And, and then my mom, it was like, like, like she reacted. I saw her face. You know, and she said, shh, it's like, I should not even point to those shoes. She said, Pamayaman yan, you know, and, and, she, and she said, keep on walking. <laughs> and I still remember that day. And I, I don't know if you ever had, have you ever had those experiences when you were growing up? It's like, Pamayaman lang yan. And so I, the, the message to me as a little boy was, you know, you, you don't even look at that. You don't even point to that. You, you do not even want to desire that. That's for other people who have money and who are rich and you and me, we're poor. <laughs> so, so my mom didn't say that, but that was the message. And I received it subconsciously. And so I was growing up, um, I always had this, this label in my mind that I was poor and I will always be poor. And so my, my mom had a poverty mindset. My mom is a wonderful lady. Please don't get me wrong. She's amazing. She's spiritual. She loves God. She's a wonderful friend. Um, she, she's just, she just had a poverty mindset. Why? She grew up in the World War II. She, she, it's, it's a long story, but that's, that's who she was. And she passed it to me. So I cannot see myself have money at that time never so and then i came to know god so he, so i had that background with my mom and then I, the other thing that came in was um, i came to know god in a very special way when i was a teenager and um, got to read saint francis of assisi and the way he gave up all his material wealth for god and then he started becoming a beggar serving the poor and uh, I was reading that book and I said, that fits me. I can do that. And I said, Lord, help me to do that. And well, it, it was a benefit, a blessing that in my mind, I was telling myself, I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. And so for the next 17 years of my life, I was a missionary. I was a single missionary and I, I wanted to live a life of simplicity and poverty. In fact, I lived with the poor. I lived in a slum area and, and then for three years, I lived in Anuim, our ministry for the abandoned elderly. I lived with the poor for three whole years and I loved it. And in my mind, I was going to say, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I will be an old man, uh, loving God, serving God, serving the poor and very, very poor. <laughs> and I was so happy. Complications came in two ways. <laughs> One was I, I wanted to, um, I, I really wanted to help more people. And, but every time people would come up to me and ask me for prayer or ask me for, for it was always, a, it was not always, but half of the time, it was about money. It was about um, tuition fee. It was about hospital bills. They didn't have money and they, they wanted prayer for that. And I kept praying, I kept praying. But in my mind, at the back of my mind, I was saying, wow, can I not help these people? At least teach them what to do. Some people come up to me and saying, Brother Bo, baon na baon, baon kami sa utang. And I said, oh, so, okay, I'll pray for you. But at the back of my mind, how can I help these people? How can I teach people? I didn't know anything about money. So that was the first complication. The second complication was when I was 32 years old, I got married. <laughs> I wanted to get married. or well, well, I kind of like discerned for many years. I thought God wanted me to be a priest and so on. But at the age of 32, I got married. And so it... 
I had that this dilemma now, wait a minute, I, I'm, I'm married, I'm, I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna have kids, I don't have money. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a revolution for me to actually look at money not as evil, but something that can be good because it will feed my kids, it will feed my wife, and it will help me help others. So I had to change everything in my mind about it. And that's what I wanna share with you today. I'm gonna to ask you that question. How small is your psychological wallet? Because this is what's gonna happen. The financial blessings may be out there. They're all over the place. And you cannot see it because you have a small psychological wallet. Because you have a low money comfort zone. You just have a little money and <gasps> you feel, you feel if something's wrong because you know, you, oh, it's too much, it's too much. It's, it, hindi bagay sa akin pag masyadong maraming pera. So that's how you see yourself. And if so, you, it will be very difficult to see the financial blessing right in front of you. And what God, ha what, what God did in my life was he enlarged my psychological wallet. And the way to do that um, there, are, there are very, very important ways to do that. And I am going to teach that at the Wealth Conference on this coming Saturday. The reason why um, I want to invite you to the Wealth Conference on July 27 is because of this. I am going to teach people how to enlarge their psychological wallet so that when the financial blessing is in front of you, you can see it and you can receive it. Because if you have a small psychological wallet, the financial blessing is there. Number one, you can't see it. Or number two, you see it, but you can't receive it because you have a very, very tiny psychological wallet. It doesn't fit. <laughs> so how do you enlarge your psychological wallet? How do you raise up your money comfort zone that you can be comfortable with more money, more income, more blessing, more financial blessing? How can you do that? I'm going to teach you how to do that this coming Saturday at the Wealth Conference. I'm so excited. I really, really am excited. I hope you join me. If you live in Manila or in the suburbs, come, come and join us. It will be at the SMX whole day. Beautiful, amazing event. If you come from different provinces, come and fly over if you want to. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'll invest in yourself. Hey, if you live abroad or if you live far away, you can still join us for the live stream. And uh, the live stream version from the comfort of your home, you can watch the whole entire thing. Here's the exciting part of the Well Conference. I will be bringing on stage the very people who helped me in my financial life. They taught me the lessons that made me become an investor and an entrepreneur. And that's, those are the things I want you to experience. So, um, oh, by the way, who are they? Edward Lee, Rex Mendoza, and Dean Pax Lapi. These are the guys who really revolutionized my financial life and I want them to help you as well. So there, um, just I, I, July 27, Wealth Conference, SMX, I'm gonna see you there, either live in the room in SMX, near Mall of Asia, or at the live stream. And together we will explore how, step by step, how you can enlarge your psychological wallet. I am so excited to be with you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you so much. And I will see you there.